Hello, I am Srini Srinivasan, CTO and founder at Aerospike. Over the last decade at Aerospike, we have been working on a lot of technology innovations to help applications that need to process data at scale in real time. Today, I will take you to a number and take you through a number of technical innovations that have been part of the Aerospike database over the time of our existence. In order to build a database to handle these demanding real-time applications, we have to start with the basics, of course. A database is supposed to keep your data safe. So Aerospike has spent a lot of effort in implementing strongly consistent transactional algorithms. We have focused on correctness as well as the ability to maximize availability. And I will take you through some of the techniques that we use in more detail in, in a minute. Once we have a database that can handle strongly consistent transactions, uh, note that these have been around for a long time in databases. However, the distributed aspect of running these transactions are a fairly recent phenomenon, maybe over the last 10 to 15 years. These have been the innovations that are table stakes for any modern database. In order to expand transaction management across nodes, across geographically distributed sites and also implement active active systems there are a number of important solutions or problems that have to be solved and we will talk a little bit about that for Aerospike, it is you know as you saw in our previous in the previous discussions from some of our customers and partners there is a lot of innovations that have happened in other systems like cpus memory storage and so on how does a database system take advantage of it is really important to understand. And Aerospike has expended a lot of time in leveraging these types of systems to enable performance at a scale that has not been done before. And we will see some of that, some of the techniques that we use in those areas. Additionally, you know, databases have always worked on implementing parallel algorithms as well as indexing. And we will see how Aerospike leverages both of these features, say, in our, in our system, but also in order to solve problems in some of the areas that we're interested in, including you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, which are essentially able to handle, I would say, real-time data in order to make better decisions. Now, what I'm going to do in the rest of this presentation is to go over each of these four areas that I have listed in this slide. First, let us start about our strongly consistent transactions. Aerial Spike has implemented, I would say, a fairly unique, strong consistency algorithm that has certain characteristics. These characteristics are used to not only optimize the transactions for lower latency, but also to provide higher availability. One of the interesting things about the Aerospike strong consistency mechanism is the fact that we use a non-quorum-based system. It is what we call is roster-based, which means the state of the nodes in the cluster is shared among all the nodes in the cluster. And this is used to manage some of the performance and availability considerations that arise in a distributed system which runs at high performance. We will talk a little bit about high performance later in this, you know, in the optimization and the parallelism sections. For the time being, assuming that we have a high performance system, which is which scales up, if you will, on a single node, what Aerospike can do is essentially upward to write all copies of the data, for example, on write, as we will see in a minute. Maintaining the consistency, as I mentioned, is using a roster, which determines based on split brain or other events, which of the data is available or not, depending on you know what is the impact of the cap theorem in this. And as you know, the cap theorem implies that you have to pick either consistency or availability in a distributed system because network partitioning are a given. The other thing that we do in Aerospike is have the ability to detect when nodes are in or out of the cluster automatically. And also, we are able to realign the clusters, as we will see in a minute. First, let us take the simple aspect of writing successfully with no data loss, for example. And what happens here is with Aerospike, because of its high performance, we are able to write to all copies in a reasonably small amount of time. So that's essentially our, our write algorithm. An application will dispatch the write operation 
for any data item to a specific master for that data item, which then will coordinate writes across multiple, potentially multiple replicas of the same data item before the write is actually committed. Now, the replicas, of course, and the master will communicate in a two-faced manner. This is not exactly a, the two-faced commit protocol. We have optimized this significantly, but the end result is once the master is returns, you know, the, once the master receives all of the specific data items that are written in the replicas, it can then come in the transaction and then communicate the commit state to all the replicas. And the client and the replicas are concurrently is informed about the covet of the transaction. Now, there are a whole bunch of details here I am glossing over, but you can obviously, you know, go to our website and find more details of, the, of these algorithms and we can share with you. But fundamentally, it is a write-all mechanism for write going to read. Aerospec supports strong consistency, which means we are able to pick various policies for reads. And the most stringent policy for read is linearizability. So to, re to linearize every read in the system with the writes that are happening, what is the guarantee that you get is any write that has happened in the system, which the system has agreed on, as per the, a read coming in after the write, no matter where that write is coming from, will be linearized with a write that has already committed. The read is linearized after the write that has already committed. What this implies is every read, when it goes to, typically it goes to a master node, will have to coordinate that with all the replicas, not to read the data from the replica. It's more efficient than that. However, it has to confirm that the replicas and the master are agreed on terms of the status of the read or status of the record. And that is important for linearizable reads. However, there is an optimization that can be done by relaxing this level of consistency for reads to be sequentially consistent. What it means is a particular application or client that writes a particular data item can read that data item. It's guaranteed to read that if the read is dispatched after the write within that application or client thread. This is called sequential consistency and is quite, you know, and, and is also a strong consistency mechanism for reads. So Spike supports tunable consistency. We can even relax consistency further, but that is actually beyond the scope of this presentation. It is not only important to maintain consistency, and as I mentioned earlier, databases have had strongly consistent implementations for decades now. However, how do you increase the availability of the system which provides strong consistency? There are always choices to make. It, at Aerospike, what we have attempted to do is to allow a maximum amount of availability, which is even more than most of the other database systems out there, while preserving consistency. And again, availability depends on the kinds of failures. So we make sure that certain common kinds of issues like a rolling upgrade and so on can be implemented with both availability and consistency in a very stringent manner. So we are always able to maintain the situation where there is no data loss and write and linearizable reads are possible. And one of the techniques that is really helpful in making sure that this kind of consistency algorithms can provide a higher availability is to implement a rack awareness scheme. In Aerospike, when you have a rack aware system set up, in this particular case, this is a two copy system illustrated with essentially two racks, which means the entire database is now available on each of these racks. A particular read, especially if you use sequential consistency that I described earlier, can read from either the replica or the master. So if you have, there are like three records which are shown here, you know, one, two, and three, and you can see that the replica for one is, or for each of these records, is in a different rack than the original record. And that's really important to understand because that's how rack awareness works. So you don't keep two copies of the data within the same rack. This means that you could potentially take down an entire rack and have the entire database available, upgrade the rack, reconnect, allow some rebalancing to happen so that the right of these two, which have happened when the first rack was down, are properly distributed to the second rack before you again take down the second rack and upgrade it. And all of this means that you have provided higher availability in a system with strong consistency. And what that means is you are you, know, you don't have to make a choice between consistency and availability during a whole number of a well-defined failure mode. And we'll see a little bit more of this as we get into the globally distributed transaction mechanisms. 
Here is another important thing that I want to make clear. Aerospike strong consistency, as I mentioned earlier, depends on a roster-based scheme. What does that mean? At the high level, you have a number of nodes in the cluster. And once the nodes are in the cluster, the fact that these nodes are in the cluster is shared among all the nodes. And the nodes will make decisions. There are rules in terms of where the availability of a partition exists. Now, I'm going to talk about partitions in a minute, but for the time being, assume that we have some number of partitions in the database which are independent of each other in the key space. For each of these partitions, there will be data items in each of these partitions. And then there will be a master copy in a two-node system. I'm sorry, in a two-copy system, there'll be a master partition, uh, which is located in one node, and a replica partition, which is located in another node. Then you can actually superimpose racks on this, if you wish. If you wish. But that's just uh, another level of detail. Now, given that, what we can do is essentially, based on certain kinds of partitions, we can make the certain partitions available for both reads and writes in some subclusters. I'll give you an example. If you look at rule two, which is the third row in this particular slide, what you see is that there is a roster master in node B for that partition, a roster replica in node C. However, the cluster splits into two subclusters A and B, and the replica happens to be in the majority subcluster with three nodes C, D, and E. At this point, in order not to violate Lampert's theorem on consistency, you know, which states that you need at least three copies in order to essentially provide strong consistency with some level of availability in a distributed system. What we have shown here is we run with two copies when system is in steady state. However, when there are certain kinds of failures, we're able to generate a third copy in order to store two writes. Because any copy, this is basically a system with two replicas. What that means is in these systems, in, if you're allowing reads and writes, there has to always be two copies. And if one copy is unavailable, you have to create that other copy temporarily. What this allows us to do in the steady state is to run a system with two copies, with a third copy that can be essentially created at the time you need to do, at the time you need it. And that's really important, as you will see in a second, when I go to the geodistributed active active systems. Now, when you go to this distributed uh, transactions, you know, we're going to extend some of the techniques that I talked about in the strong consistency section to work across nodes. That's the first step. Aerospike implements a shared memory or a shared nothing architecture where we have identified, uh, and we basically designed it that way. It does heal itself in the presence of failures, uh, you know, nodes disappearing and reappearing and so on. However, what we can also do is automatic sharding of data as we will you know, see in the parallelism section a little bit later. Now, to take it to a real, I would say, useful deployment configuration that we have seen used in production, here is a system that is essentially three copies with six nodes and three racks, which are distributed across the world. Two of those racks are in the US, and one of them is in the UK. This is a three-node cluster, I'm sorry, a three-copy system which means that each of these racks has a full copy of the data. Assuming all the reads are going to be sequentially consistent, you can now read the data locally. Of course, when writes have to cross each other and go everywhere, which is why we have the write latency to be much higher than you know even a couple of hundred milliseconds. Advantage of this system, based on the algorithms that I've already described, is that when a connection to a single rack goes away in this three rack, three copy system, the other two racks can join each other and still provide full availability and consistency with no operator intervention. And when the rack which has failed or disconnected comes back online, Aero Spike is able to recontinue, re rehydrate, if you will, the, the rack which was not available for a while, and the system continues again with no operator intervention. And this is an actually de deployed configuration in production. Now, in terms of the other side of the coin, you know, we talked about the synchronous active active system. We have a distributed asynchronous active active system, which basically does not have the trade off of write latency. Essentially, you have many clusters talking to each other using asynchronous application. These links that I've shown here using a feature that we have called XDR essentially are, say, are dynamic. 
They can be added at any point in time. In addition, we can filter on these links so you can subset data to deal with issues like GDPR and so on and various other data transfer restrictions. And what we have here then is the ability to provide consistency within a cluster with the relaxing of consistency as you move data from one cluster to another. There will be a lag. We can detect conflicts and resolve them if you configure the system properly in this case. All of these strong consistency algorithms and distributed database systems are great, except that how fast can you go? And this is where I think Aerospike specifically shines. One of the things that we have done is we have basically built our system to take advantage of some of the hardware advances over the years. First, a little bit about the storage advances. We, in, in Aerospike, we can store indexes and data in different kind of storage devices. In this particular case, which we call as hybrid memory architecture, Aerospike stores the index in DRAM, and then the data is stored in SSDs. We, of course, have to redo the SSD file system to deal with large block writes as well as continuous defragmentation. However, the end result is Aerospike's hybrid memory architecture expands the footprint of data in a node from being just stored in DRAM to also be stored in SSDs which means it is works quite differently than the traditional database structures that you have in other databases where your data has to be brought into the cache to read it. It's a buffer pool based system. In Aerospike, the random access reads are happening directly on SSDs with the large block writes happening with a copy of write mechanism. And what this gives us is the ability to have storage tier configurations. Aerospike essentially can run everything in memory with a DRAM based system, which is what is shown on the left side here in this slide. And then the middle part is the hybrid DRAM and flash, which essentially expands the real time footprint. So even though you have five to 10 X lower server footprint, because you can pack 10 terabytes or 20 terabytes or even more within single, within a single node compared to maybe a terabyte or two in a single node in DRAM, what you end up is still with sub millisecond reads and writes in the hybrid memory architecture. And that's part of our patented kind of system. If you look at it from customer choice point of view, you now get a choice to deploy workload with a different cost and different scale. And here is what you can see how hybrid memory in this case is a really great alternative. If you go to the left of this slide and you see the performance plus cost line, you see that memory can provide 99% of these requests under one millisecond reads and writes. Uh, hybrid memory can do the same thing too. Hybrid memory can also add terabytes of data while you can basically handle terabytes of data in, in main memory. We also have another implementation where we can actually store both the index and the data in flash itself, which reduces DRAM even further. But generally, if you look at the right side of this slide, what you notice is essentially the server compression metrics. So where you, where, you know, in, in the top right of this picture, you have fully main memory system, which, can, which uses about 37 nodes based on certain characteristics of these nodes, you can then run these in six nodes in an Aerospike system. This is just a comparison between two existing kind of instance types in a public cloud. Now, notice that what people have done with this is they have been able to run a petabyte scale system in about with millions of transactions per second and so on on 20 nodes, public cloud, or even eight nodes in a bare metal system. So you can actually really, really take advantage of this at high scale. Now, it's all great that we can put more real-time data per node, but what happens when you have to also increase the number of transactions per second per node? And that's where Aerospike's fee-based database kernel comes in. We are multi-threaded. We are able to do nested locking models. We have custom memory management. So we, you know, we can basically, basically run the system with very few context switches. So we can push a lot of essentially transactions per node. We have new map pen. You can, you can align CPU to network queues. So the end result of all of this is we have actually benchmarked this with a partner. We can do almost 15 million transactions per second on a single Aerospike node. And combining this with the fact that we have the hybrid memory architecture means you can actually have very uh, small size systems, a 30 node cluster running like tens of millions of transactions per second on terabytes to petabyte of data. And that's fundamentally a game changer for the kinds of applications that we are talking about here. Databases have to deal with a lot of data and they also have to deal with a lot of queries and transactions. How do you maximize this is the, basically the topic of the, this section, which is about parallelism and indexing. Parallelism and indexing are two sides of the coin with, is in databases. You have to be able to index data to reduce the amount of data that an application has to look at. Basically, you're trying to 
filter things out before it gets into the application. And then parallelism means you can handle a lot of data. An error spike does both. Let me show you how that works. Now, if you look at this picture, one of the fundamental aspects of AeroSpike is our ability to partition data in the key space to 1496 partitions, shown as 0 to 4095 here. What we have is a mapping that is taking all of these partitions in the particular system and mapping them to nodes. In this case, it's a five node cluster. And it's important to understand that this partition is a table that depends purely on the number of partitions, which is static, which is 1496, and the actual nodes in the system, which are basically dynamic, we can go in and out. So this partition depends on the exact roster of the particular system at that point in time. So what you have is where a particular node goes out, This in this particular case, the partitions to the right all move to the left. The, the, the mapping table moves to the left. So you end up with a four column table instead of a five column table when node T goes up. One other way to think about is essentially one of the algorithms here is to make sure that you minimize data movement when a node is added or removed from the cluster. That was our original algorithm. However, when we minimize data movement, what happened was that runtime, the data partition assignment of partitions to nodes became a little skewed. So we relaxed that with a heuristic algorithm where we optimize, in addition to minimizing data movement, we also optimize the uniform balancing requirements across nodes for data. And that's important because all of this is required to avoid hotspots. Another reason we avoid hotspots in AeroSpike and can provide linear scalability is that we allow the clients, which are smart, to participate in some of the architecture and how they access the data. The map, the partition map I talked about, where you map these partitions to nodes in terms of master replicas and so on, is shared between AeroSpike as well as its clients. The clients are actually receivers of this. They simply pull the servers typically once a second to get this information. So within that period of time, AeroSpike is clients are able to catch up, which means in steady state, AeroSpike clients all can generate requests which go to the exact node where that data exists. This provides that level of high performance that I think you saw some of the uh, customer and uh, partner presentations earlier. It's a fundamental differentiator of AeroSpike where we can remove this kind of latency. And all of this will generate predictable performance if you have a gigabyte of data versus a petabyte of data. And that's really important for the various applications we talked about. Secondary indexes are fairly straightforward. It's well understood. I think the main thing here is we basically co-locate the secondary indexes with the partitions. So there is a, part, a secondary index per partition. And what happens is uh, we are then able to do a scatter gather scheme, which is able to work really well for low selectivity indexes. So where a single index query lookup returns hundreds or maybe thousands or even tens of thousands of records. And this is actually a great theme to combine for not just doing simple queries, but also aligning AeroSpike with other parallel systems like Spark and Presto and so on. Okay, so in order to summarize, this parallelism here is across nodes and SSDs and threads and so on. What we have is a system that essentially can take advantage of all of the parallelism available to it in terms of hardware and so on. Finally, in order to summarize, right, I've talked about a lot of how AeroSpike can manage various parallel and distributed algorithms for databases. Now, how it's used essentially is something you would have to experiment with. There are a lot of our customers who have used AeroSpike from the beginning or for over decades. And what they have found is you can actually provide strongly consistent transactions, geo distributed, I think, consistency, active active replication, but also they're able to deliver it at enormously high performance and parallelism. The end result is AeroSpike is able to deliver certain kinds of applications in real time that are just not possible with other systems. This is for something for you to try out for yourself. I encourage you to download AeroSpike. We have, uh, you know, you can go to developer.aerospike.com and essentially what you will be able to do is to see for yourself the result of some of the things that I talked about today. Thank you.